one is going to use a telescope for astroimaging, it is correctly said that the longer a telescope's focal length, the bigger the camera sensor's pixels need to be. There are mathematical formulae that explain very clearly what size pixels to look for. But have you ever wondered what is actually going on behind the math that makes a telescope with a longer focal length need a camera with sensors with bigger pixels, while a telescope with a shorter focal length benefits from a camera with a sensor with smaller pixels? I've created some simple images to try to illustrate what's going on between the object the telescope is looking at, the telescope and its lenses or mirrors, the camera sensor, and the beam of light passing between them all. To make this illustration something anyone can follow, even somebody absolutely brand new to astrophotography, I'm going to avoid jargon, and when I do have to use it, I'm going to attempt to define it. And I'm going to stay away from math and attempt to illustrate what is happening with light, a telescope, and a sensor. Imagine that this red rectangle represents the body of a telescope. Within the telescope, there are two lenses. Now in reality, there are often more lenses, or we might have a mirror and lens combination. But probably the most basic telescope of all is a telescope with two glass lenses. So let's just say, for simplicity's sake, there are two lenses inside. One, two. Our telescope is looking at a target. We'll say a single star. Poof, there it is. And on the other end of the telescope, at the end of an image train, there's a camera with a sensor. Again, let's just keep it simple and show the sensor. Voila! In a perfect world, light would travel straight down from our star, in the form of waves that are at the same time particles. They would be gathered up by the lens at the front of our telescope and refracted down to the second lens at the base of the telescope, pass through the image train, possibly pass through some filters and other items, and eventually land on our sensor represented by the six rectangles. Now, telescopes have a quality called focal length, and it refers to the total distance that light has to travel from the moment the light makes contact with an optical element in the telescope. In the case of a refractor telescope, that would be the lens at the front of the telescope. In the case of something like a schmidt cassegrain telescope, that would be the corrector plate at the front. The distance the light has to travel from there down to the next lens, or perhaps to a mirror if you have another type of telescope, and from there, onto any further optics, and then finally at last, down to the sensor, that would be the focal length. Some telescopes have a short focal length. This means they are able to capture a wide angle of light, which further means, by dint of that, that they have a small magnification. Here's why. Let's say our very simple telescope has a very small focal length. The lens at the front is physically close to the lens at the back. This means that when it's pointed at the sky, it can collect light from a wide angle. Technically, you would say that a telescope with a short focal length has a wide field of view. And we can see that in this illustration where this telescope's field of view encompasses much of the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. If the telescope had a long focal length, the lenses would be physically far apart. So when this telescope is pointed at the sky, only light from tighter angles could pass through the front lens and reach the back lens. In other words, this telescope would have a narrower field of view. We can see this in the illustration now, where our telescope with the narrow field of view only has a wide enough field of view to show the center of the nebula. So telescopes with lower focal lengths have wider fields of view, and if we look at that object through a telescope with a wide field of view, it's less magnified. While telescopes with a higher focal length have a narrower field of view, and if we were to look at an object through them, the object would be more magnified. But how does any of this explain why telescopes with short focal lengths benefit from cameras with sensors with small pixel sizes, while telescopes with long focal lengths benefit from cameras with sensors with large pixel sizes. Trust me, we're getting there. When light is emitted by an object in space, the light can travel a straight line from its point of origin to wherever it ends up. Because by and large, space is a vacuum, there is nothing to diffract it or bounce it around. But before that light can be detected by us on Earth, it must pass through our atmosphere. And that's where things get complicated. Earth's atmosphere is turbulent, and when light enters the atmosphere, it is tossed around by that turbulence. How much it is tossed around is called the seeing. When we say there is good seeing, there is little turbulence. And when we say there is poor seeing, there is a lot of turbulence. When light passes through a telescope, the movements of the light is magnified in the same way that the telescope magnifies whatever object it is looking at. But since low focal length telescopes do not have as much magnification, the jiggling of the light due to seeing is not as much magnified. Now you might think of a camera sensor as a collection of tiny buckets, and each bucket collects rays of light. This is not a perfect metaphor. In fact, there is no perfect or common sense way to think about this because 
This is a quantum phenomenon and light is both a wave and a particle. But for simplicity's sake here, think of the light as a ray. Since a low focal length telescope has low magnification, which means that the effects of the seeing or the jiggling of the lights will also be decreased and the light ray is more able to fall into smaller buckets, by which I mean pixels here. When this happens, we get a well-sampled image and the image is sharp. But because telescopes with longer focal lengths have higher magnification, the jiggling about of the light rays due to seeing is also magnified. And if those light buckets called pixels are not big enough, the light rays will spill over into nearby buckets. When this happens, the image becomes undersampled and we get a soft image. This dilemma is resolved by using sensors with larger pixels. When the light rays are mostly able to fall into their individual pixels, the image is properly sampled and once again we get a sharper image. And there is another reason for which higher focal length telescopes should have sensors with larger pixels, and it has to do with the telescope's f-ratio. The f-ratio refers to how much light is able to pass through the telescope. The higher the number, the less light. For example, a telescope with an f-ratio of 10 allows much less light to pass through than a telescope with an f-ratio of 2. And the f-ratio is a function of the telescope's focal length and aperture, or how wide the telescope is. To get the f-ratio, simply divide the telescope's focal length by its aperture. We'll go deeper into what f-ratio is and what it means for photographing astroimages in another video. Remember that a long focal length means that the light literally has to travel a longer path from the time the light encounters the first lens or corrector plate or any other optical element in the telescope to when it finally reaches the sensor at the other end, whether that sensor is your eye or a camera sensor. And just as we have discussed, the longer the path, the narrower your telescope's field of view. You could easily do an experiment to see how this works for yourself. Take a cardboard tube from a roll of napkins. They're usually around, oh, 30 centimeters, give or take. Use a fine serrated knife to cut off about a seven or eight centimeter length of it. Now look at a nearby object through the eight centimeter length. You can doubtless see a great deal of the object. Now, hold up the long part of the tube in front of your eye. You can see a lot less of it. You are literally seeing the field of view being constricted by focal length. Granted, there are no lenses or mirrors between your eye and the end of the tube, but the tube is perfectly emulating the effect of focal length. And long focal length constricts field of view. Long focal length constricts something else too, the amount of light able to reach the sensor. The wider field of view reveals more of the image. We see the image due to light. Thus, the wider field of view is letting in more light. The narrower field of view, on the other hand, shows less of the image and thus is also admitting less light. The wider field of view therefore has a lower number f ratio, which is also referred to as a faster f ratio, and the narrower field of view has a higher number f ratio, also referred to as a slower f ratio. So low focal length fast f ratio telescopes admit more light, and the light is captured by the pixels, which are like little photon buckets. And when there are a lot of photons falling, it can be caught effectively even with little buckets. But long focal length telescopes with a narrower field of view admit less light, so it's like fewer photons fall through the telescope and land on the sensor. Big buckets will do better at catching those photons, or rather, big pixels. But at this point, you might be thinking, if I have a sensor of some given size with a bunch of little pixels, let's say 20 million little pixels, versus a sensor of the same size with a bunch of larger pixels, let's say 9 million pixels, why should it make any difference? Because whether the pixels are big or small, if they fill the entire surface area of the sensor, then one way or the other, all the electrons are going to be caught, right? And if that is the case, and indeed it is, then why at all should it matter if some of the pixels are large or small? And if you have wondered that question, or indeed anything like that question, congratulations, you're on the right track. That question is the final key for unlocking the mystery of why bigger pixels are better for long focal length telescopes. Let's go back to our analog of thinking of pixels as buckets for photons. Whatever we take in exposure, it's like we lift the lid off the bucket and allow the photon rain to fall into them. When the exposure is over, every pixel dumps its photons into the camera, and the camera assigns a brightness to each pixel based on how many photons it contained. So if you accumulated 5,000 photons over the course of a one minute exposure, you would get a low value of brightness. But if you accumulated 15,000 pixels over a one minute exposure, you would get a higher value of brightness. The camera counts each pixel's photons and assigns a corresponding level of brightness. Of course, more is going on behind the scenes than just what I've described. This is a simplification for illustration purposes, but it's a functional simplification and fundamentally things work like this.
So, in a telescope with a low focal length, a wide field of view, and therefore a fast F ratio, abundant photons fall like a heavy shower of rain over the sensor. And even though there may be many small pixels, there is a sufficient quantity of photons to adequately fill the pixels. And at the end of the exposure time, whether that's one second or 20 minutes, those pixels will be interpreted by the camera as bright and produce a usable signal. But if we were shooting through a high focal length telescope with a low field of view and thus a slow F ratio, far fewer photons would be able to fall through the telescope and down to the sensor. You might say it's like going from a heavy rain of photons to a very light shower of photons. A tiny pixel would miss many of those photons. And when the exposure time came to an end and it was time for a tinier pixel to dump its photons into the camera, so the camera can determine how bright the pixel should be for that exposure, a tinier pixel will look dimmer. On the other hand, a large pixel will catch a great deal more photons. So, at the end of the same amount of exposure, when it's time for the pixel to dump its photons into the camera so that the camera circuitry can determine how bright that pixel should be, a larger pixel will appear brighter. This ultimately means that sensors with tiny pixels produce less brightness for the same amount of exposure and F ratio than sensors with larger pixels. It's just like if you had a rainy day outside and put a little cup out there for five minutes to catch the rain. You wouldn't get much. But if you put a wide bucket out there to catch some of the rain, it would catch a great deal of water. Now there are a number of reasons to want to go with smaller pixels if you can. Digital images are ultimately comprised of millions of pixels. So the more pixels you can squeeze onto a camera sensor, the finer the detail that is going to be portrayed on the final image. Now there are factors that affect that, such as the resolution limits of your optics, as well as the resolution limits of the atmosphere. But those are topics beyond the scope of this video. And since smaller pixels don't capture photons as quickly, Sensors with smaller pixels can handle the brighter conditions in shorter focal length telescopes with faster F ratios. But as we saw earlier, smaller pixels have problems. Bad seeing conditions will cause light to spill over into neighboring pixels, creating softer images. And another issue that can come up that we have not yet talked about in this video is tracking errors can affect smaller pixels more easily. If your mount has a small error, the telescope will not be able to remain perfectly centered on the object, so the light from that object will more easily spill over onto neighboring small pixels, creating a softer final image similar to what you would get with seeing problems. Though, in low focal length telescopes, these issues are less of a problem for sensors with small pixels. However, even with low focal length telescopes, pixels can only be so small. On the other hand, larger pixels can handle the dimmer conditions of longer focal length, slower F ratio telescopes better, Partly because the few photons that fall through such telescopes will in the end produce brighter pixels. And because the pixels are larger, light is less able to stray over into neighboring pixels due to seeing problems or mount errors, which would produce softer images. But we wouldn't want to go with pixels that are too large either, because otherwise the final images would look coarse, like they're made out of little blocks. So now you know what is actually going on physically between the telescope, the optics, and the light, when the math tells you that the longer the focal length, the larger your camera sensor's pixels need to be. And generally, you want to make sure that you have the right camera sensor for the right telescope. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new that you can apply to improving your astrophotography. Now, you know what comes next. Get out there and shoot that beautiful sky.